So today we're going to be making a lovely multi-seeded sourdough bread. We're going to be using a blend of two different flours. We've got some white flour, we've got a little bit of rye flour. Lovely seed mix here, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But yeah, we're going to make a kind of a real classic sourdough bread. Sourdough simply is very simply a way of making bread rice. Um, that is it. People make it very complex, very fancy. You need to make it way over technical than it actually needs to be. So it's all based on this little guy here. So this is our sourdough starter, our sourdough culture. So simply, this is our yeast. So this is what's gonna make our bread rise. So we've done a recipe with this before, which shows you how to make it straight through from day one, straight through to day seven. So if you wanna check out some of the other videos, you should be able to find the recipe very simply, which show you how to make your own sourdough starter. So it's from here where everything comes from. So in our last video, I suppose, we did have a little bit of controversy with people getting very hung up over, is sourdough bacteria, is it a fungus? To be honest, I'm sure you're all great crack, I'm sure you're great crack at a party, but to be honest, I'm only here to make a loaf of bread. So at the end of the day, as long as it tastes good, that's all we need. So I suppose this recipe is kind of a step on from the last one that we did. So we got 450 grams of white flour and we're gonna add in 50 grams of rye flour. It's a really lovely flour to work with. It's quite low in gluten, but got a very distinctive, lovely flavor. We're simply adding in a teaspoon of salt. So to 500 grams, we're looking at 10 grams of salt. So I've got a lovely seed mix here. I've got some pumpkin seeds, some sunflower, some sesame, some linseed, um, and a little bit of black sesame seeds as well. Basically, you can use any kind of seed mix you like. You can even use some nuts, hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans. Just today, I happen to be using some seeds. So we're using 100 grams. We're using 150 grams, approximately, of our sourdough starter. And then simply then be pouring in 325 mils of water. And we're simply bringing all our ingredients together. So with this recipe, the water content in this one is that little bit higher. So we're actually looking to work with a wetter, softer dough. It does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of kind of getting used to working with the wetter doughs, but you will find it's gonna produce much lighter bread. And also, you need to think about the ingredients that you're using. We've incorporated a lot of seeds, which is a dry ingredient. So they're naturally gonna dry your dough out. So we wanna increase the water so we can keep that lovely balance. And vice versa, if you're incorporating something that's been marinated or soaked, it will add moisture to your dough, so you might need to hold a little bit of water back. So you will find the dough quite wet, quite sticky. You'll see everything's kind of sticking to me. A lot of people's reaction at home is to immediately reach for some flour and keep throwing it in there. But if you keep adding flour, the dough will quite happily soak it up and in turn, the heavier and denser your bread will be. So just stick with it, it just needs to be persistent because it takes the flour a little bit of time to absorb all that liquid. And again, if you find the dough sticking, it's usually those great, but bring everything together and just keep working away. So I'm just gonna use the heel of my hand, pushing away, and just pinning the dough between here and here, like a little dough hook would be. And I'm just stretching it and pulling it back. Little sharp movements, because again, if I kind of go really long, which some people do, you find you just tend to rip into the dough and it gets much stickier. So as you work the dough, you will feel the dough slowly starting to change. It's going to start coming more elastic. You can see that the dough is coming up together much more uh, as one piece. So you've got to let the dough dictate. The dough will always tell you when it's ready. So as you can see, as it's stretching and working the dough, it's ripping, it's tearing, it's not really holding. So that's just the dough telling me I'm not ready yet. So just keep working away. And if you ever want to know the secret to firm arms, need bread. And this is what makes bread fat free. But only if you make your own. So we've been working our dough for about 10 minutes or so. And you can see the dough started to change. It's much, much smoother, much more elastic. So when it comes to testing your dough, just take a little bit of drop of oil. Just using a little bit of sunflower oil. It just means you'll find the dough much easier to handle, much easier to manipulate. And as well as having strong arms, you'll have lovely soft hands. So when you're testing it, just use a little window pane, stretching the dough from side to side, kind of aiming towards the center. You're not just coming right out to the edge because you don't give yourself a chance. Come in towards the center, working the dough out, and you can see the elasticity. The earlier on, it was just ripping, it was tearing, it was dropping, but now it's holding. It's got the elasticity. You can see the seeds spread throughout it. You can see the lights and the shadow. That's exactly what we want. And that's a telltale sign that our dough is done. So bring your dough back together. And now we're gonna leave our dough to ferment. So this is kind of where all the magic happens. Our starter culture, our wild yeast, can get to work. It'll start to break down the natural sugars within their dough. 
It'll produce carbon dioxide, um, it releases a little bit of lactic acid because that's what gives it a little sour taste. Um, and that's where the sourdough kind of gets its name. And then the dough is going to begin to rise. So we're going to leave that for about three and a half hours. So simply just cover it over, and we'll pop it aside and give it the proof. So you can see our dough is lovely and active. So we can see how the dough has gradually been climbing up the, up the sides of the bowl. So at this point, again, we need to knock our dough back. You don't need to be overly complex or overthinking what oh, exactly we do, can't remember. Basically, turn it out, make it into a ball. Your dough is knocked back, and that is it. So at this stage, we need to shape our bread. Now, because this needs to prove again, if we were to shape this round, pop it onto a tray, it would slowly start to spread out. And you're going to be left with a very flat uh, looking bread. So the idea of the basket, it acts like scaffolding. It encourages the dough to take on that shape. So instead of proving out, it proves up. Traditionally, they're made from kind of a rotten wood. They've started making them a bit more eco-friendly by using some uh, wood pulp. So this is what these ones are made of. So you're made using recycled material. You'll pick them up online. Just Google it, check out Amazon. You're going to find it everywhere. Banaton baskets are proving baskets, what you're looking for. If you don't have a basket, you can use absolutely anything. A bowl, a tin, a tray, a box. It's just something to support the dough. But just to improvise, you can always use uh, a little casserole dish. So the best thing to do is take a dry, clean tea towel, shape in our dough, we simply turn it over, take all your ledges, one, each one overlaps the last, and don't have them just meeting, because if you do, you create this big divot in the center. The idea is it builds upon the last. Next one, next one, and next one. Just to give you a rough sort of shape, from this point, get rid of the excess flour, we don't need it. If anything, a little bit of flour on top, or a little bit of flour in your hands. Just dragging the dough forward. The idea is the dough is gripping the table. It's pulling in from underneath. Turn it 90 degrees. Go again. Each time, the surface of the dough is tightening up. Give it a little roll around. Basically, that's it. Ready to go. For something a little bit different, we're taking our mixed seeds. Hold it from the bottom. Taking a damp cloth. Roll the dough in it and it's straight into your seeds. And then your dough gets a beautiful coat in the seeds and then it won't stick to the tea towel because you've got the seeds to protect it. Pop your dough in upside down, a little dusting of flour on top, and simply all you're doing with your dough is tucking it in. We leave it to prove again. If you wish, at this point, you could put this straight in the fridge, leave it sitting there all night. Next morning, simply turn your oven on, heat it up, and you can bake it directly from the fridge. So the benefit is your proving time has suddenly gone from here to here. But we're gonna bake this today, so we're gonna let it prove again for another three hours. I'm just gonna gently unwrap it and open it up. It's grown beautifully, it's filled our little casserole dish. So from this point, you're just simply taking the lid, just put a little dust in the flour on top, just because sometimes the dough, as it bakes, can kind of bake into the lid. So just have a little bit of flour to stop it from sticking. Straight over. And the great thing about using the Pyrex dish is basically the lid becomes the base. So you flip it straight over, take off the top, and gently unwrap it. And you can see, it's got that beautiful coating of seeds all over. And the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it. The idea of scoring the bread, as well as aesthetically, it gives the dough direction, it gives us some more which to rise, because the dough wants to rise, so it allows the gas to escape. So it puts you in a bit of more control. So use a razor blade, literally, straight across the dough. And again, there you go. Back on with the lid. Because we're using a uh, little Pyrex dish, there's no need to steam. So it's going in at 230 degrees, and it's going to bake for about 40 minutes. So, our seeded sourdough has been baking for the last 45 minutes. A beautiful contrast. See where it's kind of cracked and open, it's got a beautiful crust. Coating the seeds. And that's a multi-seeded sourdough with a blend of white and rye.